Hi there, I'm Ken Lammers and welcome to Minor League Matters. And today I, a semi-informed American, am going to try to explain to y'all the rules of rugby. So let's get cracking. Okay, so I'm not totally ignorant of rugby. I am only semi-ignorant of rugby. I played, actually, when I was in law school. I was the right prop for the, for the law school rugby club. Had a blast. You know, did scrums when they told me to do scrums. Did throw in, th I mean, line outs when they told me to do line outs. Never really understood why and when I was supposed to do those and penalty kicks and all that sort of stuff. But had a blast playing, you know. Uh, so I have some idea and some practice in playing but today I'm actually going to try to you know figure it all out as in depth as I can obviously I'm going to miss some nuance because I didn't grow up you know it's not like baseball or football or basketball where I grew up watching and playing the sports uh, this is a sport that I played for three years in law school uh, well after I'd had all these other sports ingrained into me so let's see what I can get right uh, Here's the field. Now, actually, they don't call it a field in rugby, much like soccer, they call it a pitch, right? You'll notice that it's very similar to a U.S. football field. That's because football is a derivative of rugby, right? I don't know the exact history of it, but apparently there was some book that came over from England sometime back in the day, and everybody over here went nuts about this book and tried to recreate the game that was in it. Well, the game that was in it was rugby, but we came up with American football. So that's why we have differences. But, so here's a rugby pitch, right? Uh, it, I, about a quarter longer than a, a football field, uh, American football field. And I think half, half as wide again as an American football field. So it's a lot wider and longer. Uh, which makes for more room to play in and run around, uh, which is important because of the way this this game plays as opposed to American football. Uh, you'll also notice that the uh, goal posts are, have a lower bar on them that has to be kicked over, and they are placed exactly on the line that you have to cross in order to score, right? Uh, those of us that are old enough will remember when American football used to have the goal posts right on the goal line too uh, but apparently our American football players aren't quite as tough as rugby players so they were worried about hurting the poor kids guys and they moved it back to the back of the end zone where it hooks way up forward now uh, we all know what the field goal looks like uh, this is your basic layout of a uh, rugby pitch right familiar enough uh, it's the same sort of thing you'll notice a lot. Familiar, but not the same. So now let's look at some rules that there actually are about rugby. Uh, rules that uh, are different than what we have in uh, American football or gridiron football, as they call it overseas. Uh, first of all, scoring. Okay, they score what they call a try. Uh, which is the equivalent of a touchdown. Uh, and for those of you who don't know why we call it a touchdown, the reason we call it a touchdown is because in rugby, in order to actually score, you have to touch the ball down in the end zone, right? Now, this isn't part of American football, but we carried over the name because that's the way you had to do it in rugby. In rugby, if you run into the end zone and somebody grabs you and shoves you out the back of the end zone, you didn't score because you didn't touch the ball to the ground. So uh, you, you go back onto the field and there's, uh, I think it's a line out, which we'll talk about those later. And, uh, you know, the game the ball just goes back into play and the game's on again, right? Uh, for score, when you score a try, you run into the end zone and you touch the ball down. Uh, and that gives you five points. However, you also get to do uh, points after, which is uh, in uh, 
has to be, or I think it has to be, it can be held or, or put on a tee to hold. Uh, but in rugby, it, you do the points after, it's out in the field, but it is lined up to exactly where you touch the ball down in the end zone. So if you touch the ball down in the end zone on the very far right, well, then the guy who's kicking the uh, extra points uh, has to kick from the very far right. So it is better to try to run to the middle of the end zone and put the ball down so that it's be easier to get the uh, uh, extra points. And it's two extra points in rugby as opposed to one in football. So you get to the exact same same scores. Uh, if you get both of them as you do in, foot, in, in American football, seven points. But in rugby, it's five points for the try and two points for the kick afterwards, right? Uh, the kicks can also score. You can score by kicks uh, throughout the rest of the game. Uh, two different ways, really. One of which would be you drop kick the ball and it goes across, it goes over the uh, crossbar, and that gets you three points. Or on a penalty kick, if the other side is screwed up enough that the ref awards you a penalty kick, you can kick that uh, ball and try to get it through the uprights and get three points. So that's your basic scoring, the way you basically score in rugby. Three points for kicks that go through. Uh, five points for running into the end zone and touching the ball down on the ground, and two points after somebody's touched the ball on, down on the ground for kicking uh, an extra add-on points or you know your points after. So that's your basic scoring. It's not terribly hard uh, to understand. It, mainly you're seeing tries, touchdowns, and uh, points after that. Sometimes you see people score off penalty kicks. You know, I, Sometimes, I guess, some people do actually drop kick it through. You don't see that very often, though. Rule number two, and this is the one Americans have a huge problems with, no blocking. This means that nobody, uh, you cannot run in front of the guy who's got the ball to keep other people from tackling him, nor can he cut behind you to do a block to keep people from tackling him. Uh, that would be an offsides penalty, uh, at the very least, and so you can't do that. Uh, basically, the point of offsides in uh, rugby is where the ball is. So if you are in front of the ball, you're offsides. You ha now there's not necessarily a penalty if you're offsides, unless you use it somehow to make an advantage. You, you know, you just have to put yourself back on side before you can start playing again. But, uh, you know, you cannot get in front of anybody and block. Even if it's not non-physical block, just interfering with them. Uh, that's playing advantage from offsides, and, and you'll get a penalty. No forward passes. And by no forward passes, I don't just mean, you know, like, uh, you know, Dan Marino lining up and throwing it 40 yards. I mean... You know, anything where you throw a lateral and it goes forward, or there's this thing they call a knock-on in rugby. If you have the ball coming at you and you try to catch it, but you miss, uh, and it bounces off your body or bounces off your hands and it goes forward, that's a knock-on, and that'll be counted as a penalty against your team, right? Minor penalty, but a penalty against your team. So uh, you cannot move the f ball forward through the air at any well no I take it back you can move the ball forward through the, through the air if the other side team has kicked the ball and you've jumped up and you block it and the fact that you've blocked it and it moves forward away from you uh, does not make it a knock on that just makes it a live ball but that's the only time that you can touch the ball and move it forward from your body and it not be not count against you Tackles in rugby. Okay, tackles in rugby are, well, obviously, they're not wearing pads, right? And you see some helmets, kind of. We'll talk about that again a little bit in the future. Uh, but, uh, you know, there are certain rules. You cannot tackle the head and the neck, right? You cannot tackle with the elbow straight. So that's no stiff arms, 
and no clotheslines. Uh, you cannot leave your feet when you tackle, right? So you can't dive at somebody to take them down. You've got to be running at them when you wrap them up and take them down. You see a lot more wrap-up tackles in rugby than you do other types. Um, and you cannot trip somebody. Other forms of this obviously will exist, but basically, it, you know, rugby encourages wrap-up tackles it, you know, with the heads up and everything. Uh, it does not encourage, you know, spearing into somebody. Uh, you know, if NFL was seriously worried about wanting to get rid of concussions, you know, it's, there's an easy way to get con rid of concussions. You get rid of that helmet. You wear a little leather pad helmet and nobody spear nobody. You know, and nobody's leading with their head. Uh, you're going to tackle head up. And, but, you know, the NFL's not going to do that. They'll just keep adding new versions of the helmet. But, uh, you know, so tackles are not terribly different, but uh, there are, other than the fact you can't dive in anybody, but they are different in, uh, in rugby. Uh, in rugby, they have yellow cards and red cards. Uh, this is kind of a play over from soccer, of course. Uh, if you do a serious enough penalty where somebody could be harmed, you get a yellow card. And unlike soccer, where you just keep playing, apparently in rugby, you're out of the game for 10 minutes. It's kind of a almost a, a hockey rule, right? Uh, except the second yellow card, you're out, period. It's not like hockey where you just keep getting, you know, put in the penalty box. Uh, apparently, the second yellow card, you're out in uh, rugby. If you get a red, which means you seriously took a chance of injuring somebody, well, then you're out of the game, period, right? So they've got those in there. And uh, rugby is a continuous play game. It plays for 40 minutes, has a 10-minute break, and plays for another 40 minutes. Uh, it does not have first down, second down, third down, fourth down like American football does. If you're tackled, you have to put the ball on the ground and let people grab it, right? Uh, in practice, that means usually you put the ball behind you and your own teammates grab it. But if the other team can get to it, you know, you they get the ball and, and can just keep playing. But if, you, if, if the match just keeps going, unless there's a penalty or an injury, they do not stop. So... Let's talk a little bit about the equipment that people wear when they play this game. Okay, you're seeing here these guys trying to look tough in this bright white uniform. That is the English team. And you can tell by the rows up on the top section up here, uh, which you can almost can't see. And uh, obviously the O2, the billboard that every uh, soccer player and rugby player carries uh, that uh, on their body because they got to make money somehow and they don't get commercial breaks so they all look like walking billboards they're not quite at nascar level yet give them time but they're not quite there uh and you can see here it's a pretty basic uniform right uh shoes socks that generally come up over the calves shorts a shirt that's uh pretty tight because you don't want somebody to be able to grab it and sling you or something like that or grab it and tackle you pull you down uh, this is a more modern version of the uniform if you look right here this uh, this black uniform here that's the more old-fashioned type and there even if you look back further you see things like the old uh, like hockey strings on some of the really old ones but uh, this is more traditional uh, old school rugby shirts that's a new zealand all blacks shirt by the way uh, now outside of these pieces of equipment the, uh, your uniform jersey and everything uh you have basically have two other pieces of equipment you can have over here uh that way <laughs> there's the uh uh kind of a helmet you can wear a little leather helmet now, you don't see that a lot. Mostly it's worn by people who are going to be in the scrum. Uh, and uh, they are, uh, as it was explained to me when I was playing, the primary purpose is supposed to be to protect your ears, keep them from getting ripped off in the scrum, keep you from getting cauliflower ears. The same reason you wear them in, when you wrestle. Uh, 
But you note that uh, a lot of them, or almost all of them anymore, have padding across the top uh, as well. So they've moved on from that. Primarily, other than that, there really isn't a whole lot of other uh, armor worn in uh, in rugby. Uh, I think they may have changed some and let them wear some shoulder type pads or stuff, but uh, generally not. And this this thing over here on the far side over here, uh, there is the rugby ball, and a rugby ball is shaped semi like a football it is uh it is shorter than a football and rounder than a football right so it's a uh, kind of a a football it feels like an american football that has blown up a little bit right uh harder to throw with one hand although what you can do is a lot better with it that you can't do with an american football and i'm not sure you'd want to a lot of times when you pass in rugby you hold the ball and you pop it with your hand and you can get a lot more distance with it that way. Uh, overhand throws aren't seen as much as rugby. I think because it's harder to control um, and you can only throw backwards anyway so it doesn't work as well. Okay, there are certain things, certain types of plays you see in rugby all the time. This is what's called a ruck, right? And this lady down here in the bottom, you know, by the way, women play rugby they're pretty damn awesome okay but uh it's you know you ever think that women can't play a violent sport they can play rugby uh this lady down at the bottom is tackled she's put the ball down and players from both teams have converged over top of her right they are and they they hit each other and people from, from uh, other people from the team form up behind them and they try to push each other back and forth uh, over the ball, and uh, as I understand it, the team that was on offense, the team that got tackled, the, their players can grab the ball and try to shove it backwards, whereas I think the uh, defense's team is limited to uh, trying to get it with their feet, which is really interesting for the people down below. Uh, rucks are dangerous an interesting thing that you see in rugby not you don't see it as much as you would think because a lot of times it seems like the defense just concedes that the offense is going to get the ball again uh, at least in the matches I see played a lot this will go on for a period of time until the ball either comes out the back uh, or the uh, there's some sort of dangerous activity that collapses the ref thinks something dangerous is going on, or the ref just concludes that uh, we're not getting anywhere here, at which time the ref will pull them apart and have a scrum. And we'll get to a scrum in just a minute. This is a maul. Now, a maul is nobody's tackled. Somebody's got the ball. And there are kind of a couple ways you get to a maul. Uh, and... The, you know, both sides are just shoving, trying to move the ball down the field one way or another, right? Uh, kind of two ways you get to a mall. One is in a line out where the ball is thrown, you know, your team grabs it and throws it back to their players and it forms up into a mall and you start moving forward. Uh, we'll talk about line outs in a minute. And the other is you purposely play for it. Your guy who's running point, who's out there front, you know, everybody else has to run behind him. He's running front, and he just turns around. He's got the ball in his hand. The next two guys clamp onto him, uh, and he, they hand it to the guy in the center uh, who's there, and they they move out, form into their wedge. Uh, generally, the guy who's got it, you know, one guy's still turned around backwards getting shoved, and, of course, the other team is slamming into his back and forming their wedge, too. So... Uh, while this wedge is being formed from the offensive side, the ball is also getting passed back, and this guy in the center is moving to the rear of the uh, rear of the mall, and they're pushing forward and trying to slide sideways and all sorts of stuff. Um, and this goes on until there's some sort of the mall collapses, the ref uh, decides it's dangerous, 
or there's it stalls for five seconds, I think it is. If it stalls for five seconds uh, or more than five seconds, then the ref will call it all off. If the ref decides to call it off, he calls it off, and it ends up, they go into a scrum. So let's talk about scrums. This is a scrum, right? Uh, the ref has called off the, uh, you know, either called off a mall or he's called off a ruck because they're too dangerous or they're not going anywhere. And he determines which team deserves to have the ball, at least to throw the ball into the scrum. And it can also be on knock-ons. You know, if, if you miss catching the ball, it bounces off your hands, it goes forward, and the ref calls that it's a minor penalty, that ends up being a scrum. Or if you lateral and you lateral forward, uh, not, you know, not overhand throwing this way, that probably a major penalty. But if you lateral forward slightly, uh, again, that can end up being a scrum. Uh, so that's where you end up in scrums, right? The uh, teams form up, three guys on the front line, uh, four guys on the second line, one guy on the last line, uh, and they're not supposed to come together. They're not supposed to be like an offensive-defensive line hitting each other. They're actually supposed to kind of come together kind of quietly, and it is a penalty if they go wham into each other. But they come together. There's usually a little bit of force in it. I'll admit that. And I played right prop. Uh, I think there's a fancier name for it, but everybody I know called it right prop. And the three guys on the front, there's right prop, left prop, and your guy in the middle who's called a hooker because his job is to hook the ball with his foot, right? So after both of the scrum, both sides of the scrum have come together, then the ref gives the ball to uh, one player from, from one of the teams, who, which he has determined some way, and that person throws the ball into the center of the scrum. It's supposed to throw it straight in, and both hookers try to grab the ball, right? Nobody else is supposed to be able to, are supposed to be playing for the ball. Uh, and they, they shove the ball back. Whichever one can get a hold of it shoves the ball back into his part of the scrum, and it goes backwards. Uh, now, there's two things that can happen then. If the, if the guy who's got it scrum is stronger, they can start pushing forward, and their team can just keep the, the ball underneath their scrum and keep moving, or else it can go to the last guy here, who then grabs the ball and you know hooks it off, throws it off to the next guy, and it play continues, right? Um, or actually, I think it's the guy behind him. He has to kick it out, but in one way or another, it goes out the backside of the scrum and goes on, right? So that's a scrum, and you see that a lot of times. Um, one of the most painful things about watching NFL football is watching announcers call, Ooh, that's a scrum there! No, it's not. They usually mean that's a ruck or a mall or something like that. They don't know enough about rugby to call it right, so they get it wrong. And, uh, you know, because scrums are much more coordinated than either rucks or malls. And then there's one last thing that you can see uh, that happens in rugby a lot. If the ball goes out of bounds, right, um, the team that put it out of bounds, well, the team that didn't put it out of bounds then gets to throw it in. There's only one exception to that. If you get a penalty kick and you kick it forward and kick it out of bounds, then you get to throw it in. Otherwise, in any other circumstance, the team that, uh, that didn't, make it go out of bounds, gets to throw it in. So what you get is this. Now this on the left here is a, uh, a lady about to throw it in. Now she has to throw it in at least 5 meters, 15 feet, and they're lined up back there. Uh, and she's supposed to throw it in straight. Right Now you'll see here, if you look carefully, there's the, a couple of ladies are facing away from her and they're crouched down. That's because they're going to do what you see down here at the bottom one. Uh, they're going to throw these people up in the air to try to grab the ball. Uh, the person throwing it in, you know, can try to call in some sort of code to say how far they're going to throw it, that sort of thing. Uh, 
you know, and supposedly gives some an advantage. Uh, and everybody jumps up, and you can throw the guy up into the air. I think you have to keep hold. You have to throw him from the shorts. You can't throw him from below the shorts on his knees or something like that. And you can see here they get pretty doggone high trying to go after the ball. Generally, they throw the ball away before they hit the ground, uh, and play continues that way, uh, either in a mall or in actual fluid play. Uh, I have seen a really interesting play I watched on YouTube that uh, I didn't. It wasn't. I didn't film it, so I didn't feel like I had a right to, to show it here. But uh, you can do a really sneaky thing where you have all your people lined up, or a lot of your people lined up, and then you have somebody run all the way to the back of the line and just throw it long. And uh, that person then can get it, generally has a pretty open uh, slot because everybody else is in this line, jumping up and down and everything, and everybody's watching that. If you just throw it all the way past all of them and to somebody who's running long, they can grab it and run for the goal line. And uh, apparently it works pretty good from what I've seen. Uh, so those are your four basic kind of things that you see. Uh, now, you know, Maul, Scrum, Ruck, and then Line Out, right? That's kind of the more interesting things you see. Rugby is a lot more fluid than football, right? You don't see, you know, th this is a way of playing, of philosophy playing. Uh, Europeans who are much more used to soccer type play, I think play less for rucks and malls and that sort of thing. Americans, at least if they've not grown up playing the sport, will play for rucks and malls and scrums. And that's the fun part for us. Uh, Europeans seem to favor more the running around and playing a lot more fluid game and uh, doing things like X's to, you know, guy runs this way, other guy runs this way behind him, and as he gets the, he'll toss it backwards. It's really kind of cool looking when you see it. But uh, they're a lot more fluid in the game uh, than Americans would be or generally are. Uh it's a really interesting game. It's a fun sport to play. I've, like I said, I played it for three years. Uh, I recommend it to anybody who can find a place where it's up for playing. And usually there's a lot of beer drunk afterwards, too. Uh, but that is what our American gridiron football came out of, is rugby. And it's kind of a good idea to know what, what it came from. Uh, at the very least, you'll know where the term touchdown came from. And so that uh, finishes my explanation of rugby. I am absolutely sure that I got something wrong uh, or that I have, uh, you know, not told something that should have been told. I mean, it's a fairly complex sport for what it is. However, anything that uh, I got wrong, say down below... Uh, correct it for other people who are uh, other Americans of that that are trying to watch and figure out what rugby is. Uh, again, as I always say, I will try to read any comments. I cannot promise that I will write back because I have to work at the day job and they expect me to do work and you know and earn my paycheck and that sort of thing. And I kind of feel obligated. So uh, that's why you don't hear as much from me in comments. Uh, beyond that, if you like this particular video, hit like. If you like what you're seeing around here generally, hit subscribe and then go watch every single video 900 times because that's the only way I will ever get this channel monetized under Amazon's new rules. And with that, let me give you one last piece of advice. Go watch some minor league sports. See you all soon.